Hello students, welcome back. Today we are going to discuss one important chapter, one crucial chapter for your exams and even for the practical scenario also. Without this, there is no international taxation for me. Okay, this the chapter name is transfer pricing. So transfer pricing chapter will give you minimum 10 marks in your exam. Minimum 10 marks, it can be more, it cannot be less. That's the trend that is going on in the CA exams. Okay, so to learning this chapter is very, very important and conceptual understanding is very, very important. So I'm, I will be, you know, I will explain the each uh, concept in a detailed manner. So I will spend some time here. Be with me for some time. So before going into the provisions and definitions, so I just want to give you a background of why this transfer pricing provisions were introduced in India. That's very important to understand the provisions. But if you already know about it, you are hearing for the second time this, this, this lecture and you can actually skip this introduction video and you can go directly go on to the provisions also. Okay, so I will take an example to understand why this transfer pricing provisions are important. Let's take an example. In this example, I took the three companies. One is A Limited, which is registered in India and another two companies BPT and CPT, which are registered in the Singapore. Okay, B Limited is a subsidiary of A Limited. BPT, sorry, BPT is a subsidiary of A Limited and, and CPT doesn't have any relation with the either A Limited or BPT. So it's an unrelated party. Now we, I will take an example. So if you see in this uh, question, A Limited sells goods to its subsidiary BPT Limited. BPT Limited, it sold goods around 10 units for 500 per unit, 500 per unit. Similar the same goods, it sells to C CPT Limited at 1000 per unit and sold 10 units during the year. So because it is selling it to its subsidiary BPT, it sold at a lesser price, that is 50% discount it has given. Now we will see how the P&L extract looks like at the end of the year uh, with concessional pricing, without concessional pricing. That means A Limited sells to B, uh, BPT Limited at 1000 unit only without any discount without any discount. So how the P&L looks like. Now with the concessional pricing to BPT Limited, with concessional pricing, what is the total revenue? The turnover will be 15,000. How this turnover is arrived? 500 into 10 units, that is 5,000. 1,000 into 10 units, that is 10,000. 10,000, 5,000, that is 15,000 here. And the purchases, let's take a purchases uh, for a simple uh, rounding of number, that is 10,000. Now the profit is 5,000. Now the tax, tax we take as a, for convenience purpose, we'll take it as a 30%. 30% tax rate is 1500. Simple P and L extract. Now, without concessional pricing to BPT Limited, without concessional pricing to BPT Limited, that means I, I, A Limited sells to B and C at the at the unit price of 1000 only. In this case, the turnover is 20,000 and purchases again I will take uh, I will take 10,000. This 20,000 arrived because total 20 units, 1000 per unit, it is 20,000. Now. And the profit they got is 10,000 and the tax they paid is 3,000. If you observe in both these cases, here in the example, in the with, with concessional pricing, central government is getting the tax from the A Limited 1,500 rupees only. But if there is no concessional pricing, then central government would have got the tax of around 3,000 rupees. That means government is losing around 1,500 rupees with this transaction. So A Limited is happy because it is selling to goods to its uh, you know subsidiary subsidiary B Limited. B Limited is very happy. It is it is getting getting a concessional price so that it will get a competitive advantage. BPT is also happy. Who, who is unhappy here? The central government because the central government is getting the lesser taxes because of these concessional agreements. Imagine around the country in a day how many these kind of international transactions would have happened? How much would have tax foregone by the central government? That's the reason why these transfer pricing provisions were important. Transfer pricing provisions bring in the Finance Act. Now, in summary, the, there are three conditions should satisfy. There are three conditions should satisfy to make these provisions applicable. What are those transfer pricing conditions? The first one, when I'm talking, when I'm saying A Limited, BPT, CPT, are these domestic or international transactions? This is an international transaction happening outside India. So, trans goods are transferred to outside India. Can I say? The first condition to apply these provisions that they should be an international transaction. Condition number one. The condition number two. So condition number two when I'm saying, so for example, if you are selling to a stranger, which you don't know, unrelated person, do you give any discount? Do you give any concessional pricing? No, right? But when you are selling it to a related party, 
then you will do a concessional price and price gap will be there. So the condition number two to apply these provisions, it is not applicable to all the international transactions. It is applicable to only when there is a transaction between the one company and another entity which are associated to each other. That means can I say the condition number two is associated enterprise. This transaction should happen between associated enterprise. In this case, A Limited versus BPTE. There is an association is there. A Limited is a, a B Limited is subsidiary of A Limited. So condition number two is associated enterprise. Condition number three. This, con this transaction can be related to goods, services, loan, etc. This, if these conditions are satisfied, then there is a transfer pricing provisions which are, are applicable. Now, if it is applicable means, when I'm, when I'm explaining this example also, yeah. I have used two prices here. One is 500, another 1000. What central government is doing? They are applying the 1000 rupees for the transaction between the A limited and BPTE. What is that called? What is the technical term to use in these provisions? That is called arm's length price. Arm's length price so if these three conditions are satisfied then assessing officer take that particular transaction and try to identify the arm's length price to it so what is arm's length price why this word is like this so when you are measuring the height of somebody you know what you do we will use the shoulder height right shoulder height that is arm's length height there they are simply using the we are, we are measuring the price here so they are using the word arm's length price that we will call it as alp these are the basic things of transfer pricing. We will see the definition. We will see the definition of international transaction, associated enterprises, and what are the services, services, goods or services that are included in the transaction to apply this transfer pricing process, as well as the methods of computing the arm's length price. Also, we will see in detail in this chapter. Now, let us go to the definitions part.